Hi guys, Olive here, here today to do the over 30 book tag. Yes, that's right. Toward the end of last year, I turned 30 years old, which means that I can finally do this tag that was originally created by Ink Not Blood. I will leave a link to the original video down in the description box below. Now you might be saying to yourself, really? I thought she was already over 30. And if that's the case, let me just say you and me both. But then again, I have felt and acted 35 years old my entire life, basically. So there's something quite comforting about the number finally starting to catch up. I also just recently found out that I am actually younger than Katie Tastic, AKA Cat O'Keefe. That was a weird moment for me. Anyway, for better or for worse, 30 is a milestone. It's a good opportunity to look back at where you've been and look forward at where you're going. And while I'm in that mental space, I thought this would be a good tag to do. So let's do it. Okay, so prompt number one asks me to name one of my favorite books that has a protagonist who is 30 years old or older. Since I just recently watched a movie adaptation of this book, I will go with The Wife by Meg Wallitzer. This book follows a couple, Joe and Joan Castleman. I think they're in their 60s. I don't think the book or even the movie ever gives them specific ages, but they are older. At the beginning of the book and the movie, they are on their way to Helsinki so that Joe can collect a prestigious literary prize. In the movie, it's the Nobel. Bell Prize. And throughout the book and the movie, we get flashback scenes to pretty much their entire life together. And we find out ultimately why Joan wants to leave Joe. I really like books that feature older protagonists. I find there's so much perspective there. There's so much more life lived. I think many more books should include older protagonists. Question number two is name a book that represents who you were when you were younger. It took me a while to figure out an answer for this one because I am more or less the same person. But I ended up going with you are one of them by Elliot Holtz. The reason why I chose this is that one of the main characters is an American woman who lives in Russia for a while and she experiences all the confusion that comes with being an outsider in Russia. I spent a small amount of time studying in Russia, but I spent a whole lot more time studying pretty much everything about the country during my college years. And in this book, the character feels a lot of that confusion, but a whole lot of fascination for the Russian people. And when I think back to those years in my life, those are the types of feelings that I remember the most. Question number three is name a book that represents where you are in your life now. I'll actually use a book that I just recently read. I talked about this book in my January wrap up. That book is Old in Art School by Nell Painter. This is the memoir of a professor at Princeton who in her 60s decides to start all over and go back to art school at the undergraduate level. This really isn't the moment to go into everything I've been going through in my personal life over the past, what, two years, especially since I don't make a habit of talking about my personal life very much on this channel. It's a booktube channel, so I don't really like to do that. But let's just say that the idea of starting all over again and going down an entirely different avenue to try to find more personal and professional fulfillment, it's something that appeals to me right now. <laughs> Question number four is name a book that represents something that has never changed about you. That book is You Don't Have to Like Me by Alita Nugent. I obviously picked this book because of the title. I remember using this book because of the title in a sort of similar question in a different tag I've done previously. I can't remember which tag it was. But I think I remember saying in that tag as well that this isn't even meant in an aggressive way, but in a way where it's just like, it's cool if you don't like me, it's fine. I don't know why, but I've always been that way, that kind of take it or leave it kind of person. I don't really get that offended when someone doesn't like me. I think I kind of accepted at an early age that I'm a weirdo and I just decided to own it. I have always really enjoyed being an individual. I like doing my own thing. I like marching to the beat of my own drummer. It's the reason why I have the tattoo that I do. I also know that people don't really like when you buck tradition. I have experienced that many times in my life, but I'm also an outspoken person. I know that can rub people the wrong way sometimes. I try to be as respectful about it as I possibly can be, but I know that not everyone's going to like me. Not everyone is for everyone, and I'm totally okay with that. I'm not going to squash my individuality because some people might have a problem with the way that I am. I also get really tired of myself too, so I don't always blame people for not liking me. Do you ever have one of those moments where you just want a vacation from yourself? I feel that. Question number five is name one of your favorite classics. And to answer this question, I'm going to go with a book that basically introduced me to my love of the classics and it also doubles as a favorite. That is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I think it was in 2013 that I was getting back into reading after having fallen out during high school and college. And at that time in 2013, I wanted to read some of the classics, 
But I definitely was one of those people who thought that I was far too stupid to be able to understand them. The language was incredibly intimidating. But it was actually the audiobook of Jane Eyre that helped me hear the music of the language. And now it's so familiar to me that reading a classic is no problem at all. To this day, this is probably my favorite of all of the Bronte novels. And I will always be so immensely grateful to this book for opening up the world of the classics to me. If that giant best books I read over the past five years video that I did taught me anything, it's how much I value the classics. Because I'm pretty sure five of my top 10 fiction books that I've read since joining booktube were classics. I just realized something about this question. Is it implying that you yourself are a classic if you're over 30? I'm not sure if I'm flattered or offended by that. And the final question is, name a book that you like or would like to read that was published in the year you were born. I'll go with Liar's Poker by Michael Lewis. This is by the author of The Big Short, which is a book he obviously wrote much later. This book is basically all about what it was like to work on Wall Street in the 80s, and it's told from firsthand experience. I love The Big Short, so I'm hoping that this book is a mixture of The Big Short and a hopefully tamer version of The Wolf of Wall Street. I swear that book was even crazier than the movie. And that's it. Six questions, short and sweet, since I apparently have a limited amount of life remaining. I appreciate the brevity. I don't know who to tag because I'm not really looking to out anyone's age if they don't feel comfortable putting that out there. So I guess I will just put the broadcast out there for anyone 30 plus. If you're looking for a loving tag to take long walks on the beach with, this one might be for you. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video or about anything in general, please feel free to throw it in the comment section below. But you can also find me on a variety of different places on social media and the links to all of those profiles will be in the description box below. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.